you are chaotic, you are baroque, you are pieced together by Darwinian evolution from things that were there before. Yeah, it's a beautiful system. This is not a job. Don't tell my employer that, but this is not, <laughs> to me, this is not a job. After three infusions, the tomb was starting to shrink. Discoveries from three labs are leading to surprising new treatments for cancer and other diseases. But these researchers didn't set out looking for cures. They were interested in something much more basic, how our bodies respond to low oxygen. It's the one thing that you consume the most of and can do without for the shortest period of time. Spend time at high altitude and your body shifts gear. Your metabolism changes, you begin growing new blood vessels and making new red blood cells. And two of the researchers, Greg Semenza and Peter Radcliffe, wanted to figure out a tiny aspect of this response. We wanted to understand the expression of this gene. That's correct, me too. They wanted to figure out why a certain gene in kidney cells turns on when oxygen is low. The switch, Semenza discovered, was a seemingly unremarkable protein called HIF. The surprise was that HIF did much more than turn on this one gene. I said to myself, well, you see people and they think that whatever they're studying is the most important thing. And I said, we'll be rather circumspect about this. But then after a while, I wised up and said, no, it's involved until proven otherwise. <laughs> in fact, HIF is as central to keeping you alive as your organs. It exists in almost all animals, choreographing a response to oxygen and regulating other parts of cell life. And since its discovery, it's been shown to play a role in many cancers. Breast cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, gastric cancer, uh, pretty much the gamut. This is amazing. So you started out with this very specific question, and you stumbled on this super fundamental player. Right. This is called serendipity. You're quite right. We stumbled over it. And it's one of the great things about science. We have hypotheses, but a lot of times, at least in my case, those hypotheses are wrong. Uh, but it doesn't matter, because the whole goal is to find out how is nature organized. There were about five discoveries in my laboratory in the course of this, and I, I can remember each one more or less to the second. Of course, most of the laboratory life is, is not like that. It's the management of total failure to understand anything at all. The important thing is have ideas and test them rapidly, efficiently, ruthlessly. Bill Kalin, coming from a completely different direction, found another player in the oxygen sensing system. He was interested in a hereditary disease called von Hippel-Lindau, which can lead to kidney cancer. People with this illness have a mutated von Hippel-Lindau gene, and it turns out that this gene, when it's working properly, helps keep HIF in check. So you can think of HIF as being sort of the conductor for a symphony, where in the symphony you have many different genes. Some of those genes are devoted to, how do I survive if I'm not getting enough oxygen? But it also turns out this HIF is controlling some genes that determine whether a cell does or does not divide or invade surrounding tissues. Without a properly functioning von Hippel-Lindau gene to suppress HIF, the symphony can get out of control. And this can lead to cancer. Hi, Mr. Richards, how are you? Dr. Kale. Paul Richards, a firefighter, was diagnosed with kidney cancer that spread to his lungs. I can go into a burning house, no problem, but blood or anything like that, I'm very weak. I, have, I couldn't even look at the tumors when they were in my body. He's on a clinical trial for a combination of drugs for kidney cancer, one of which inhibits a player in the HIF symphony and is based on Kalen's research. After one cycle of therapy, you can see the fluid is almost completely gone, and this large pulmonary metastasis has been greatly reduced in size. Since I've been taking the drug, I've had none of the side effects, and believe me, there is a page full. After three infusions, I had the CAT scan, and the tumor was starting to shrink. So three more, and hopefully it's still shrinking. Yeah. I think this is what physician scientists in particular uh, live for. These labs and others have identified more and more players in the oxygen sensing orchestra inside of us and how miscues and wrong notes can lead to disease. It's a complicated picture. It doesn't play the same role in every illness. 
Still, the knowledge is spurring therapies, not only for cancer, but anemia and cardiovascular disease. Treatments that were set into motion 25 years ago by a tiny question about how our bodies work. Can you imagine what your life would have been like had you asked another question about the kidney? Sometimes I try to, but uh, the answer is no, I, 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 I can't. I mean, that must be true of us all. That we go through life in a chaotic way, bumping into things that affect what we do. And I guess the art of life is trying to optimize the circumstances rather than be too concerned about influencing those circumstances. Thank you.